something about the Psalms I really love. You know, I love the honesty of it, the rawness. You know, it's something childlike. Uh, I mean, you say he's brutally honest. They are prayers. They are prophetic prayers. It's not just poetry, but it's poetry on fire. You know, so when you put a melody to something like the Lord is my rock, my strength, my shield, my strong tower. You know that heaven is agreeing with you. The Psalms were intended for corporate use and when you sing straight from the word, you're not only singing to Jesus, but you are singing Jesus because He is the word and He is perfect theology. Oh God, you forever. So let's lift our voices and give Him a shout of praise. He's the Prince of Peace and He's the King of all kings. Prince of Peace, King of Kings, Alpha, Omega, His love is forever. The Lord of Lords, the Lamb of God, the Lion of Judah, His love is forever. Forever 
Greetings, and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. Uh, it's been our joy and privilege to come your way and spend time with you uh, in God's Word. What we've been doing over the last few weeks, and uh, uh, which we'd like to do again today, is just to take a psalm and reflect on uh, that psalm and draw some lessons and encouragement to our hearts from that psalm. Today, we'd like to look at Psalm 100 which is a psalm of thanksgiving or a psalm of praise and uh, adoration to God. It's a psalm where uh, the psalmist is just just giving thanks to God, adoring God, praising God. You know, there are those times in life when all we want to do and we need to do is praise God, thank God. You know, something has happened in your life that has got your attention and draws you to give thanks to God. Maybe a prayer was answered. A need was met, you received provision in your life, or an unexpected blessing came into your life, which, uh, you know, you really wasn't, you were really weren't thinking about or even, uh, you know, desiring or praying about. God just blessed you with it. Uh, something happened, something good came into your life, and, and you want to just turn your attention to God and give thanks to God. Psalm 100 is a wonderful psalm uh, to do that, uh, to help us do that. And often you would hear worship leaders. Read Psalm 100 uh, before the beginning of the worship service in order to encourage the entire congregation to come into a place of praise and thanksgiving to God. And again, that's uh, just so wonderfully appropriate uh, to use Psalm 100 at that time. But let's take a few moments today just to look at these uh, five verses in this very short psalm. Verse 1 says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord. All you lambs. Now, you know, many of us don't like that. Don't like to make noise to God. But literally what this verse is saying is, make a joyful noise to God. All you lambs. Now, there is a time and there is a place for solemn, reverential, quiet, somber worship of God. There is a time and a place for that. But we must also balance that out or also understand that there are those times when the scriptures encourage us to make a joyful noise to God. That means celebrate the greatness of God. Uh, uh, Let there be an exuberance, a burst of energy, a release of of all that we have in order to proclaim uh, the greatness of our God. And of course, there is nothing on earth that we could do uh, that could even match up to the infiniteness or the infiniteness of God and the greatness of God. But whatever we do, we are doing it out of the fullness of our hearts uh, as a way to say, God, uh, I am so thankful. God, I am praising you. God, I am adoring you because you are so great. And so we make a joyful noise to God. We uh, lift up our voice with all the strength we have, all the energy we have, with all the instruments we have, and make a loud noise uh, to God. And he says, all you lands. The psalmist is in anticipation of people all over the world worshiping, praising, exalting God. He says in verse 2, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Serve God with gladness. That means the word serve simply means to work or to till the land, to do your work. Serve the Lord with gladness. So when you're out there in your, uh, 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 just imagine you're out there in your workplace, you're out there doing something. You're serving God and do it with gladness. Do it with joyfulness. You serve the Lord with gladness. And now when you're turning your attention toward God, he says, come before his presence with singing. You know, this is something very important for us to understand. That our singing can usher us into the presence of God. Now, you and I understand that when we worship God today, we worship God in spirit and in truth. So we are not necessarily... uh, Uh, depending on a particular place, uh, a sanctuary or a building to worship God. We can worship God anywhere. But here is a simple key, that singing helps usher us into the presence of God. Singing is so powerful. It's just you expressing your heart feelings towards God in song. You can sing your own song. You can sing a song that 
Uh, others have written and others use and worship of God. But that singing ushers us into the presence of God. Come before his presence with singing. Verse 3, know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So when we come to thank the Lord, when we come to adore him, praise him, celebrate him, make a joyful noise, when we enter his presence with singing, we also come with this recognition in our hearts. Our hearts acknowledge, our hearts recognize that the Lord is God. He is our maker. We are not our own. We are not people who are self-made, but we are created beings dependent on our God. And we are his people, people that he cares for, people that he provides for, people that he sustains, people that he takes care of as sheep of his own pasture. So we come with that acknowledging in our hearts, God, you are God. All that I am, all that I have, everything I possess, Lord, it's all your provision into my life. It's what you've given to me. You've blessed me with this. God, my health, my strength, my body, my mind, uh, everything, God, it's what you've given to me. We come with that recognition in our hearts as we come to praise him, as we celebrate him, and, and we are not ashamed to acknowledge that all that we have is what God has himself given to us. So he says there in verse 4, Enter into his gates with the thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. So the gates and the courts are referring to the places around the temple where the congregation, the people, the crowds of people would gather together in order uh, to worship God for congregational worship uh, and praise to God. So he says, you know, when you're coming in through those gates, what do you do? You come with thanksgiving. Just remembering all those things that you can thank God for. And you enter his courts with praise. So you come into this place where people are gathering together. You come with the praise to offer up to God. Be thankful and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. This is who our God is. He is a good God. He is a merciful God. And his truth, his word, endures to all generations. His word will never pass away. And we recognize who God is. And so we worship him and we praise him. Now, of course, the setting of the psalm most likely was during the uh, tabernacle worship that David, King David had instituted. Uh, we understand that one, as, 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 uh, as soon as David became king, he set up the tabernacle that we call as a tabernacle of David. He put it all together. He appointed, uh, you know, about 288 worship leaders and 4,000 singers and 4,000 people who would work in the, the tabernacle. And he, he got all this together so that there could be continuous praise and worship to God. And people could come in, uh, uh, congregate anytime just to praise and worship God. Uh, we understand that this, this, this most likely was the context in which Psalm 100 was written. Now, in our day and time, uh, yes, we gather together as people uh, on, on our weekly basis, uh, um, either on a Sunday or some other day of the week. But on a daily basis, you and I can approach God in the same manner. That we come before him with singing. We enter his gates with thanksgiving. We come into his courts with the praise. Now, in one sense, it's us entering into the heavenly tabernacle in one sense because we'd actually never leave that presence we never leave a God's dwelling place spiritually speaking we always have access to the most holy place but whenever we want to enter into the presence of God here's a simple key you give thanks you sing you bring praise that ushers us into the very presence of God and as you let praise turn into worship you begin to experience the very glory of God coming on your life. So you enter in with praise and thanksgiving and singing. And let that lead you into the, the place of worship where you encounter God's presence. And you come knowing who God is. He is our creator. He is the shepherd of our souls. He is the Lord who is merciful. 
He is the Lord who is good, whose word, whose truth endures forever. You come knowing who God is, and you bring your praise and worship to God, and you come into that place of worship where you experience His presence. So let's maintain this in our lives, giving thanks to God. When good things happen, don't forget to thank Him. Don't forget to praise Him. Use a psalm, a psalm of thanksgiving. Make up your own words. Make up your own psalm to offer thanksgiving to God. It's the right thing to do. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you for all that you've done in our lives. We are grateful to you, God. Many things that we take for granted, our health, our strength, our life, the food we eat, the opportunities we have, the people we work with, so many things that we take for granted. But God, today we give you thanks. We celebrate your goodness in our lives. We say the Lord is good, His mercy endures forever. His truth endures to all generations. The Lord, He is God. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Thank you for your goodness in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. I wait on you 
'Cause I am safe and secure. My rock, my tower, Lord, You are my shelter. My rock, my tower, Lord, You are my shelter. A leader in the kingdom is not a big shot. You pay the biggest price. You're willing to face the fire if something goes wrong. You're willing to be accountable for other people's lives. If something goes wrong with them, you are held responsible. You set the standard. Raise it high. The heart of a servant, willing to serve people, counts a lot. The willingness to walk under authority and in humility counts a lot. Then you're ready for leadership in the house of God. Hi there, we're just delighted to introduce to you our free church app. The main highlight of our church app is what we call the toolkit, which has eight powerful sections filled with the Word of God for you. We have a section called Gospel with tools to help you share the Gospel with your friends. We give you videos. We have a section called Reasons, where we provide answers for commonly asked questions that you might encounter. When people ask you, how do you know that God exists? How do you know that God created everything? Why do you believe Jesus Christ is unique and so on? Questions that you need that you will face and there are answers there. We have a section called Faith Builders where we list scriptures on various areas of the Christian life to help build your faith and make your declaration and act on the Word of God. We have a section called Identity where we give you all the scriptures that you need to know to establish your personal identity of who you are in Christ. We firmly believe that who you are in Christ is who you really are. Uh, there's a section called on how to where we give you instructions or guidelines on how to do various aspects of ministry. How do you minister healing? How do you minister deliverance? How do you lead somebody into the baptism of the Holy Spirit and several other areas that you would encounter in ministry? We have a section called group study guides where we give you several guides to be used in small groups to study the Word of God together on various topics and themes and this, this will keep on growing. We have a section called Principles where we give you the Word of God to help you uh, make right choices and decisions as you encounter various scenarios in everyday life. And then we have a section called Lifestyle uh, where it tells you the, what the Bible says on various issues that you may face in life. And so this toolkit is something that's really important that you'll keep coming back using almost on a day-to-day -day basis. In addition to the toolkit, we of course have all our sermons available to you, the audio, the video, the sermon notes, and the series. We have our TV programs available on the app so that you can watch it anywhere, on demand, anytime. We have our worship videos so that you can listen to uplifting worship music from our worship band. We have all our books available so you can read the books on your mobile device. And of course, we have the ability to connect to our services live from wherever you are in the world. So make sure you head out to the app or Google Play stores Search for All People's Church Bangalore. Download the app right away. Enjoy the journey. I'm sure it's going to be a great blessing to you.